That's right, man. We're back in the place right now. It's the one and only Wednesday Rec Show. It's 90.9 FM KCC. Of course, 104.1 FM out there in Hollister, San Juan Batista, and South Gilroy, and worldwide at Wednesday Rec. Dot com. Joined right now in studio, very special guest. He goes by the name of D Wise. Oh, oh. What's up, man? How you doing tonight? I'm good. I'm good. How about you guys? And how you guys doing in here? We in here, yeah, man. Great. And, enjoying having you here, man. Yeah. Having some good conversations. Oh man. You know, re it. real quick, man. Real quick. D Wise, one half of the Bums Brothers Under Madness. Yes. Uh, definitely got a lot of airplay here on my show, on the Verbal Tech Show, thank you, thank you. Uh, back in uh, 95, 96, whatnot. Uh, but break it down, man. I mean, how did the bums come together? How did you get your start? <laughs> well, I started off on the wake-up show with Sway and Tech, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, started off as a crate runner, you know, grabbing records from whatever artist came in the joint. Uh, passed it on to the DJ, and then I turned into a lightweight comp comedy factor in the background, but I also was a, you know, MC. But um, I got my start on there just freestyling. So every Friday, you know, he would let us, it depended on, you know, what you had for that show that day. So, but I got my first start on the wake-up show, you know, busting freestyles every Friday from 11 to 1. And it turned into me and Evol, Evocalist, we started going back and forth with each other. So we would feed off of each other. So I would say four or five bars, eight bars or so, and he would pop in. And it just got too easy. So one night, uh, A&R came up there. Uh, Earl Lamato was out here. He was looking for artists in the Bay Area. And he came up to the wake-up show, and, you know, he was like, yeah, I came out looking for artists, yada, yada. He came to a full visit, and he left. And then when he got in the limo is when he heard the freestyles. So after he heard the freestyles, he decided to make a U-turn. So he came back up to uh, to the radio show, and it was like, uh, yo, yo, Sway, who, who were those two guys that were just rhyming? And he was like, uh, that guy over there in the UPS shirt, and the guy over here in the Army fatigues. <laughs> so he was in the military at that time. Okay. And I, right. worked, and I worked in a barbershop in UPS, and he was like, are they a group? And he was like, I don't know. Let me go talk to him. So he walked over and said, hey, that's Earl Lamato. He's an A&R from Priority Records. And uh, he just nice. asked me, were well, you guys a group? And then he walked away. And I said, what do you mean? He's like, that's the A&R from Priority over there. He's asking if you guys are a group. So are you guys a group? And then so light bulb went off, yada, yada, yada. We talked for a few minutes. Because uh, we knew each other from the show, but we really didn't know each other as, you know, artists. So next thing gotcha. you know, we did the thing. We came up with the, uh, the name of the group right then and there. And all is history. Yeah, and that's that. You know, real quick, you mentioned you were working at UPS in a barbershop, so you were kind of like Craig before Craig was Craig. Yeah, basically. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I, Don't I, please tell me you didn't get fired nah, on your day nah, off. No, nah, I didn't get fired on my day <laughs> off, man. I was, I was really able to quit on my own. <laughs> you weren't stealing boxes, were nah, you? No, nah, no, I wasn't making no clubhouses and none of that. I was making some money for them. It was free, <laughs> free selling on Fridays, too. Yeah, I would, I, would get off, I would literally get off work. Get on the train, or meet up with Sway, fresh off work, boots, whatever, whatever, dirty. Go up there, do the show, whatever, every Friday. Exactly. You know, a lot of people uh, only see Sway on MTV now. They think, oh, Sway is so big, but Sway is just an Oakland cat. You know, I mean, he... I went to, I went to junior high. I went to, I, went to ho I went to high school with him. His grandmother lives like five minutes from me. Mm -hmm. uh, I probably was chasing behind him. Once I, you know, I hooked up with CMT from EA Ski, formerly EA Ski. Oh, right. We started together, me and CMT. So I'm the first cat that's ever been over a CMT track. Okay. Shouts out to CMT Miraculous and Ferg. But anyway, um, and after that, I just followed him around. I just stuck with him, stuck with him, stuck with him, and became like, you know, one of the crew. So then all of a sudden, I started meeting all these other guys, Motion Man, Cool Cass, Evocalist, Mr. Me, Steve Deff. Fred Red, Joe Quicks, you know, I met all these dudes through all of that, and we became, you know, a crew, all CD Productions. And so, and they made some banging music. I never got to get on any of the, the All City records because I came in, I was late. I was like one of the last ones to get in All City Productions. I thought you were on Bust Your Rhyme. No. Oh, wow. Nope, okay. No. Nope, I thought nope. you were on that. Nope. Nope. I, I begged, I begged, I begged and begged to get on that record, but um, they already had it said and, and said and done. But I was always crew, so it didn't matter, you know what I mean? I came from that. That's where I'm from, ACP. So it didn't matter about the record. That was one of my favorite records. 
that I wanted to be on. I'm still a little upset to this day, but it's cool, you know. Look what it, look what I got from it. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. You know, we're gonna jump into uh, one of your songs, "My City," in just a second. But I, I, I gotta I gotta ask one thing. Being that you were behind the scenes of the Wake Up Show and you yeah. were there for all the classic stuff that went yeah. down there, I always wondered who was Mahatma. <laughs> Muhammad was Mo. It was Mo Ali. Oh, okay. It was Mo Ali. Okay. Muhammad was Mo. You know, they always came up with some kind of, you know, gimmick for the show. Somebody had to be the funny guy. So Mo Mo <laughs> beat Mo beat that beat that out out the break. So those were some of the funniest yeah, crank calls yeah, yeah. I ever heard in my life. Hey, it, it's been times that you know people might have wanted to come down to the station to see him about. I remember hearing that they yeah, had to stop yeah, doing it because yeah, they were right. getting threats. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We started getting we started getting real bad threats because it, it got kind of it got too easy, <laughs> you know. And I, I'm like, you guys, you guys listen to the show. I'm like, you should know this is coming to somebody. <laughs> but you know, so the the funniest one I ever heard. Um, you know, there was like, a, I guess there was like a vinyl shop where they would like repair like linoleum and that kind of stuff uh, and, you know, um, vinyl like uh, upholstery and whatnot. Cars and so he, he calls the place and he's like, yes, is this vinyl repair? And they're like, yeah, you know, we can fix any vinyl. And he's like, good, I have these records from the 70s. <laughs> and they're scratched up. I need to get them replaced. <laughs> and the guy's like, we don't do that kind of vinyl. <laughs> and he's like, you just said you did any kind of vinyl. Yeah, no, no. Mo, Mo can make sense out of something, you know, like, look, if I'm going to call about vinyl, he's thinking I'm talking about a poster. I'm talking about records. <laughs> yeah. Let's see if, let's see if he can answer this one, which is, which is logical. Yes. You say you're a vinyl shop, you fix any kind of vinyl. Right. He's going to ask you about some vinyl. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. If those that don't know what vinyl is, that is wax, a.k.a. records, yes. 12 inch, 33s, whatever you want to call them, <laughs> 45s. The real deal the right real there. Deal. Mm -hmm. All right, man. So my city, talk to me about this, man, before we drop it. Well, my city was um, was basically a, a, like a cry out for Oakland. You know what I mean? It's like it's a lot of stuff going on out there. You know, I grew up there. You know, I was born and raised in East Oakland from the from 73rd to 23rd to 55th, where I grew up to whatever. I'm East Oakland all the way through. But when I got older and had kids, I moved out. You know, then you don't get to see Oakland as much. So every time I would go back to, you know, record or go, you know, just hang out, it just started looking different. And I would always say to myself, like, what's going on with my city? That, that right there always stayed in my head. Mm -hmm. So years and years went by, and then I ended up asking one of my producers, Millennium, I'm like, yo, I need a real deep track. And I would ask him for months and months and months, and he finally gave me the track, and it instantly clicked. And I wrote that song in maybe, what, one, one day, one or two days, and then recorded it one time. Went in the studio, recorded it one time, and to the point that while after I recorded it, the studio, the engineer said, "Yo, come out." I'm like, "No, let's run it." He's like, "No, you're done." But it was basically a cry out for open for everything that's going on out there. You know, what I'm saying the violence, the drugs, the homicide, um, anything you can think of. You know, it's just a cry out, like you know, what's going on out here? What can we, corruption. <laughs> yeah, but we, you know, all of that. What can we do? What, what can I say? You know, what I'm saying. So I, I was basically, you know, crying out like. I love where I'm from, but I'm sad about it. You know what I'm saying? So I basically wrote that record, and that was basically just a call out, just a cry. Like, what's going on out here? I'm, I'm thinking the remix needs to feature a verse about the abandonment of sports teams to Oakland. <laughs> you, got the, you got the Raiders leaving. You got the Warriors yeah, leaving. Yeah, yeah. Oh, wait, the Warriors? That's yeah, the yeah, they're going across the water, man. Yeah, they, they were oh. relocating to San Francisco. That's right, yeah. I did hear that. No, so, yeah. yeah, we're basically losing everything out there, except for the Oakland A's, which they decided not to go to. You know, uh, San Jose? Yeah, I, 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 yeah I, I, they were, they were going to try it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it wasn't going to happen. We're going to stay right there. All right, man, we'll check it out. This right here is D-Wise. This is called My City. Enjoy this record. And we'll be back in a few minutes to talk some more with the man himself. Thank you. A whole lot of stuff that we did not know, and I'm sure there's plenty more. When are you going to write a book, man? Man, my life is a book, man. I can tell you that. I mean, I've never, I've thought about it before, you know, writing a book. I don't think I have the the patience. I think I got a little bit of ADD. I don't think I could sit down that long to write a book. <laughs> no, you could do it in spurts, you know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, 20 year <laughs> spurt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, no, but, but I was going to say, um, I, I've heard of folks that create books, well, they create the blueprint of a book by yeah. just kind of speaking into like a, a speech to text. Yeah. So I think Dragon Speech is one of them. Okay. That works really well, where you can just 
think out loud. Oh, okay. And then later on, you can, you know, organize it into okay. a chapter or put it in order, put it in sequence. That's a good thought. So I'm about to check that way, you don't have to just, you know, keystroke away. You know, you can oh, okay. just be, yeah, yeah, be you just you especially you. as an MC. Yeah, yeah, you know, that, that's pretty yeah. freestyle too. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah, man. Yeah, pretty much. Absolutely. So, you know, in the in the time that we were off the air, we were talking about a whole lot of things. Yeah. Um, you know, just going back real quick one time, you know, obviously we talked about it in the first segment, D.Y.'s, big part of the legendary wake-up show in the backgrounds and whatnot. Yes, sir. What was your favorite memory from the wake-up show? Uh, man, there's so many of them. You can't really just decide. I think, I think the best thing I ever got to see was, uh, you know, meeting Big. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And then being able to get put on the Big Mac tour from them, you know, actually seeing us perform a few places. Right. And that's how we end up linking up with it. And, um, you know, I was at work. I was at the barbershop. Jackie's Custom Styles, when Sway pulled up, was like, yeah, I got a few haircuts I need you to do. And I was like, all right. Then everybody started walking in. I was like, yo, D, where the Fat Joe is outside? Wow. And, you know, I was like, what? He's like, yeah, Fat Joe, he's like, gang star, you know, guru. He's like, what? I'm like, what? I looked out. It was a big old bus, and you know a couple of you know big bands. You know Big was in it. Uh, I gave I gave uh, Fat Joe a cut. Um, Blue one <laughs> with Guru, God rest the dead. But after that, you know I cut the hair, and he was like, well, you know after you finish cutting, you gotta get, you know get ready to go. I'm like you ready to go where? He said, well, these guys want you guys to tour with them while they on the West Coast. So nice. We ended up, wow. end up rocking with them for the rest of their tour while they was out here on the West Coast. That's awesome. And we got to do maybe the last two to four shows before Big Pass. You know what I mean? So that was pretty big. We did one at the Sound Factory with them. And another, I can't remember exactly where, but, you know, that, that's an honor right there in itself, you know. You know, that's one of the uh, things that I always, you know, I, I, I'm not somebody who, like, looks at things and says like, oh, I regret that, I re- or I regret this. I, I kind of look at it as like, everything you go through is a, is a learning experience. Correct. But the one thing I will say that I do regret, uh, when Big was first coming out, the Arista was holding a, uh, a meet and greet dinner with Big, and uh-huh. they invited like 20 DJs from the Bay Area. I was on that list, but the dinner was on the night the show was on. Uh-huh. I, can't, I can't turn my back on the show, so I didn't go to dinner with Big. <laughs> That was my chance to meet Biggie, and I didn't. I didn't, I didn't go. Me. Well, I mean, you had other things that were more important than you. Yeah, you know. You know? So you, the listener, you should realize <laughs> that I could have went out and I could have like you know heard unbelievable and and all that stuff before unbelievable came out, but nope, had to do the show. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's life. That's <laughs> the way it goes, man. That's the way it goes. So bring me up to speed, man. What's what's going on with you all currently? Right, all right now, I'm on one right now. You know, I'm all <laughs> over the place right now. Um, Got a few features I'm on right now. Hooked up with some cast back east. I did a record with Sadat X. Mm, uh, nice. All Purpose from Prophets of the Ghetto. Uh, my boy Ferguson. Check out that. It's on. You gotta check that out. Ferguson from the door. I'm on that. Produced uh, by CMT Miraculous. Okay. Uh, formerly of EA Ski. Um, I did a song with my boy Chip the Barber. I got a new project out right now that's on iTunes, Spotify, Tidal, everywhere you can think of called Wizzle. D Y S A K A Wizzle. Check that out, and I got a, another project I'm trying to drop around New Year's, hopefully around New Year's, called uh, Four Five, and that's the that's a full length album. It's like ten songs on there. Okay. So you know I know everybody's doing seven, and you know my Wizzle project is an EP, so mm. it's six cuts on there. It's basically introducing you to the to the Four Five project. Okay. Uh, okay. Cool. Okay. All right, and there's some fly music on there. Well, you know earlier on in the show we heard uh, My City. Yes. Which uh, you also have a video for that that's on YouTube, right? Yes, yes. Uh, before we let you get out of here, we're going to get into uh, a song I've been playing for the last few weeks. Yeah. Uh, Ohio Player 2, Spit. Ohio Player to Spit. Okay. Uh, bring, I mean, tell me about this record. I mean, Now, this goes back to... In- interesting title. <laughs> yeah, okay. Well, I went to Oakland High, class of 88, mm-hmm. okay? And um, from 85 to 88, you know, all the crew, we called ourselves Ohio Players. Cause we went to Oakland High. Oh, okay. 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 So we just cut it down to Oha players. So. Which is a play off the Ohio players. Uh, not really, but it's just it's just like a clique of dudes. Okay. You know what I'm saying? That we all that we all hung around in high school, and to this day, to this day, we all still call ourselves Oha players. Okay. So, one of my boys, Jimmy Swagger, is like, man, well, you gotta hurry up and do us a song. And so I end up writing Oha player to spit. 
Because a bunch of them have, you know, everybody has their own terminology. Who they are, Oha player, you know, basketball player, yada. I'm an Oha player that spits. Mm -hmm. So that's why I wrote Oha player to spit. And that's a pretty dope record. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. Uh, production wise, who, who took care the of this? Whole, everything that I do now from on my projects personally, all my projects is done by Poetic Beats. Okay? There's no other producers on my project. The My City was produced by Millennium. He's out of uh, Richmond, which is Evo's cousin. So, my city, but that's not a, that's a personal record. I, I put that out on my own, just you know, just as a cry out, like mm -hmm. take this. It's not for sale. Just enjoy it and okay. understand the message and the meaning behind it. But everything is done by poetic beats as, as of now. And the uh, the four or five project you're saying so you're looking at that around New Year's? Yeah, around New Year's. Okay, okay. And that'll yeah. also be on iTunes and all iTunes, that stuff. iTunes, Spotify, everywhere you can think of. Coming out on Fifty Fifth Hill Records, which is my label that I started. You know what I'm saying? I felt that you know. All, and I grew up on 55th and Fleming, and, and I've nice. always talked about 55th in my records and so on and so forth, so I went on and just decided to make my own record label, 55th Hill Records. Nice, nice. Always thinking about the, uh, always, the hometown. Always humble. I, I love my hometown. I don't live there, but I love it. And being your own boss. Yeah, too. I love that too. I love that too, being able to put it, my, no, yeah. I, I get to put my own records out when I want to. Yes. You know, I can make a video when I choose to, you know what I'm saying? And I, I, perform, I perform pretty much as, you know, when I want. But when I feel the venue is, you know, pretty rocking, I'll rock anywhere anyway. So it don't matter. But, you know, it, it just feels good to be able to do your own thing. Yeah, that's kind of my question. Earlier I was going to ask you when we were off air, but I figured I'd save it for folks out there. Too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, earlier you were talking about, you know, kind of making a surprise appearance in San Jose. Yeah. Um, where, where can folks catch you live? I mean, well, it sounds like you're dropping a lot of projects. So, so is there a tour coming? Or well, there's a tour coming up. I'm supposed to be getting on in February with uh, All Purpose, uh, Sadat X, uh, a few other cats from back east, um, Phantasm from the Cellar Dwellers. Oh, nice. Um, and I, I end up linking up with these guys, you know, through Facebook. I got it. Sadat X wanted him to get on a feature with me on one of my records that uh, Poetic Beats made. Okay. And we weren't able to keep the production, so we had to skip off on that one. But Sadat X always shout out me like. You can always get at me for the same, you know, for the same thing. But what happened was, all uh, purpose ended up linking, you know, they friends with Sadat X, and they went on and just, you know, crossed numbers with me. Right. And all purpose got at me on Facebook, Reese Tanaka, and it went from there. And then she, they just asked me if I wanted to be on a couple of records. I said sure. So I got on the records, I wrote them, recorded them here, sent them back to them, and that's all she wrote. So it's right. like I got, a, I got a Philly family, a back east family. That rock uh, that rocks my music and I rock theirs, so we linked up and you know possibly there'll be a tour in February and I'll be on the road. So this is a West Coast tour or East Coast? Uh, I think it's going to start back East first, okay. and then it's going to travel out. You know our whole thing is to get it out, you know get it everywhere. You know what I mean the whole tour. So we're trying to get it you know out here nationwide and overseas. All right, cool, cool. Now was this? Uh, I know you were supposed to be out of New York a couple of weeks ago yeah, and it got postponed. Yeah. Is this part of that or? Yeah, it's a part of that. They decided to go ahead and just do it via text and via um, you know conversation, you know through the telephone or you know FaceTime, you know with the meet and finding out you know exactly what's going on with the tour, the venues, how many venues, so on and so forth. So that was basically it was just going to be a meet and greet. Right. You know what I'm saying? So basically, we'll be meeting and greeting soon. <laughs> but you know, for right now, we just did it through uh, through the phones. No doubt, man. No doubt. So, you know, you mentioned uh, having, you know, East Coast and, and Philadelphia. Now you got some cousins in Salinas. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. You know? I, got, I, got, I got East Coast, West Coast, down south. You know, I got, you know, I got people everywhere, man, that, that fool with, with your boy. And I, I'm really humbled to that. And I really appreciate that. If people want to, uh, you know, contact you or get at you uh, online, how they go about doing that? I mean, you can go on my Facebook. I'm not afraid to say my name. It's D'Angelo <laughs> D.Y. Smith on Facebook. You can catch me at DY's 55, uh, excuse me, DY's 55 of the Bums. You can find me the same name on Twitter, DY's 55 of the Bums. Uh, Snapchat, DY's aka Wizzle. Um, Spotify, Insta, I like said Insta. Um, basically everywhere, you know. Cop that Wizzle. It's a wonderful package. It's a short EP, but it's got some real banging music on it. That's the important yeah. thing right there. That's what's most necessary in this, uh, in this time and place. Yeah. Good Absolutely. music. Yeah, I mean, that's the whole point about making music is, is for it to be relevant. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And that's what I choose to do. So, I, you know, sometimes I might make a record two years, one year, you know, three years later, you know, but I, that record will be relevant for years. Gotcha. Right. That's the important thing. Yeah. I have one question. I'm sorry. <laughs> Go ahead, man. Yeah, um, so 
to me, it seems like music is a lot easier to put out. Just for, like, it just seems like anybody can get on with the digital age. Um, so I want to ask, like, how do you view that? I mean, do you take yeah, advantage of the digital technology yeah, I, I, at least, or do you? I, just I, keep I do, it? I do, I do now. But you know, back then it was it was it was much more of a grind, right? You know, because you have to actually go to the DJs. Exactly. You have to really hand them your music. You know, what I'm saying you had to really talk to them. You didn't have to just walk up, and, you know, you know, get at me at such and such at. You know, or yeah. at, you know, it, it was different, but, you know, it's so much easier to get your music out because it makes it, makes it easier for you to do it on your own. True. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, you can, you can, now you can reach out to distribution companies and get a deal. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. They'll work a deal with you now because they want to distribute your music anyway. Right. You know what I'm saying? But it's always, you know, 360 deals, 50-50, whatever, whatever. But, you know, that's the game. True. And so with me being an old head... I have to adapt, so you know that's why we got the iPhones and the, mm -hmm. the super technology. Everything is bananas now, so yes. it makes it that much easier. But for old heads like us, it makes it that it makes it that much harder because we used to the old hustle. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because it doesn't exist anymore. You know what I'm exactly. saying? So no, no. it doesn't exist anymore. It's so. true, man. I mean, you know, I, I I'm not as uh, booked as regularly as I used to be, but when I go DJ now, yeah. I gotta be on records. Yeah, you know, so I gotta do I gotta do old school no, shows. No disrespect to Serato, no, not at all, not at all, because it makes it it makes it easier for the DJ to pull those records up. It's like it's, it's their crates right there in front of mm -hmm. them. Mm -hmm. But I like seeing that DJ spin oh, around and grab that wax. You know, I like to hear that exactly on that record or for you. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. But yeah. it's changed. It is what it is. You know, the world is. So it's a new genre. Hey, <laughs> it is what it is, like you said, man. <laughs> All right, we got to get up and out of here. DJ Moy is up next with Revelation Time. Again, thanks to D-Wise hey, for you, thank you. coming yeah, down thank today. Thanks for having me out. And uh, hopefully, you know, you know, when the new projects come about, you know, come on, come back, man. You know, I know how you want it, radio version. I got you. Um, you know, and come back down, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, you know? I'll take that ride. Maybe we have to stay out here for the weekend. <laughs> hey, maybe, man, maybe. <laughs> That's a long ride, uh, <laughs> All right, man, check it out. This right here is D-Wise, Ohio, Player 2, Spit. Deuces. And we'll catch you next week. Peace. Peace. Peace.